Thank you, Lise. Thank you, 350. Thank you, Deb, for doing the tech. Uh, really happy that you all are taking some time out of your Monday to talk about creative and powerful actions. Looking forward to learning from and with you and introducing you all to the world of beautiful trouble if you don't know it yet. I think you'll really love it and it will be quite helpful to you in the work that you do on climate. So um, yeah, we're going to jump right in. So while we're getting settled and making sure everybody can access the slide deck, we invite yourself to introduce yourself in the chat. Let us know who you are, what pronouns you use, where you are in the world. If you volunteer or work with a group, that would be great to know. If there's anything that's really on your mind right now, let us know. It could be funny, it could be professional, it could be personal, whatever it is. Go ahead and drop it in there. Thank you for introducing yourselves. Mm -hmm. And I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Nadine. I use she, her pronouns. I normally live outside of Washington, DC. I'm traveling, visiting my nibblings, my nieces up in New England and the United States in the Northeast. And um, I've been doing creative direct action work for decades. I hate to tell you how long, like four decades worth. And I currently work with Beautiful Trouble and we'll tell you more about Beautiful Trouble as we get through the slideshow today and introduce you to this world of powerful creative actions. So um, you can see um, on the next slide, actually, for those of you who, on slide number three, again, if you, are just joining us. Here's the deck to get into. Um, this is our agenda for today. Some quick introductions, uh, learning a little bit about where we are personally, what we know about creative action stories from our own experiences. We'll take a look at some amazing things from around the globe. And then we're actually going to jump right in, dive right in, and create our own actions here today so that you can have resources for your own campaigns to use. All right, so let's go all the way to slide number four. Now, if you're in slide number four, you'll see this beautiful colored line, orange to blue, and a question at the top. It's what is your comfort level or experience with creative actions? And you have a choice. You can grab, click on one of the little images and, and drag it somewhere, as you can see I just did. If you are very comfortable, you would be at the blue end of the spectrum, you lead and you plan actions all the time. You might even teach other people. If you don't go out and you are really not someone who finds them a good thing to do, you might be on the yellow or orange side. So you can click on a star or a moon. You could even type your name in somewhere above the colored line to say where you are. And I see people are filling it out and we've got a nice spectrum going already because we get to learn from each other. If you're someone who did a little, if you can't access it, but you want us to put you on there, why don't you write in the chat where you want your star or moon to be, yellow, orange, blue, and we'll put you in there. Or also you can feel free to unmute yourself and tell me where to put you so I can, so we can get a good sense of what we've, who we've got in the room and what kind of knowledge we're entering with. I see one, two, three, four, five. There should be a few more folks putting notes. And I will, thank you, six, great. And I'll let you know that this tool um, of the, using the Google Docs is intentional because once we are finished with this training, you will still have access to this Google Doc. So you will have all the notes and links and everything that we use at your fingertips for going back to when you want it. Awesome, excellent. So it looks like we have a lot of experience in the room. That's really exciting. Love to learn from you. So you can feel free later if you want to go back and drag something somewhere. Um, if you want, it's pretty anonymous, right? So just feel free to put yourself wherever you are. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take time in our breakout groups. You're gonna have about 10 minutes in your breakout group. We are dedicated at Beautiful Trouble to popular education and starting where people are at learning from each other and incorporating all our knowledge. So at this time, we're going to go into breakout rooms of uh, four or five people each. And we are going to, first of all, do a round of introductions, verbally say hi to each other, hopefully turn your video on if you can for a minute, if your bandwidth lets you, and um, let people know where you're at. And then I want to encourage people to share stories of one Thing that you think was the best or could have been the worst, you know, creative action or action that meant something to you ever. And 
we know you all have a lot of experience. So just pick one thing. And here's a short form of how to do it. Talk really quickly about what the campaign was or the issue. Identify one goal or objective that they might have had. Say what the action was that you're thinking about. And if you have a link, I'll give you, well, I'll show you where you can put it. And then why do you think it was the best or the worst? Or why do you think it was effective or ineffective? And there was a place in the slide deck for you to type. So in slide six, you can see there's a template where you can make a copy of that slide to write in it. And this is how you do that. You can go to the top of your document where it says slide. And when you click on slide, there's a drop down menu and it says duplicate. So when you get to your breakout rooms, you can just make a copy of that slide and you can then copy and paste right in there. So here, I'm gonna give you an example of, for example, here's a campaign or issue that I'm thinking about, uh, the civil rights struggle in the United States. And one of the goals of the civil rights struggle in the US was to desegregate public spaces. One action that I am thinking about now is the action where the young students, black and white students sat down at lunch counters and actually desegregated, physically desegregated those spaces challenging the desegregation laws. And I think it was one of the most uh, powerful actions because um, it put in place the future that they wanted. It directly confronted the injustice. It was done completely nonviolently and it re and it compelled other people and modeled the way for other people to do the same thing in their town. And it spread like wildfire and was quite effective. So you can see how quickly I told that story as a challenge. I know to think about our examples and tell them quickly, but it's something great to learn to do too, our storytelling. All right, so could we have thumbs up of people who are feeling confident that when you get to your <laughs> breakout room, you know, you'll do a go round of intros and then you'll tell a few stories and somebody can take notes in one of the slides that you copy. I see a clapping hand. That's good. No? Okay. I see a thumbs up from Mercy. Who else have I we got? Wasn't, I'm not clapping. I, I have a question. Oh, great. Can you tell me your question? Annie? I'm sorry. Uh, how do I make a copy of this slide if I right click and then where do I paste it? So all you have to do is copy, go to the slide, click on it, and then uh, there should be a drop down menu that says duplicate. Uh huh. Thank you. And um, one only one person in each group really has to do it. And you just need to tell each other which slide you're typing into. All right. Um, duplicate. So when we get into the breakout rooms, I'll, I'll come visit you. But you're going to have 10 minutes in your breakout groups. And you're going to share stories of creative action. Hopefully, you'll have a few of them. If you have links, you can drop them in the slide. I've already made one copy. For example, slide number seven is a copy. And actually, maybe I'll just make a few duplicate slides and you can just use them right now. There's slide, slide seven, eight, and nine. So you can use those and 10, right? So whatever group you're in, go ahead and get in it. Feel free to post. And then when we come back, if we have time, we'll share with each other one or two stories that you talked about that you thought were very great or, or were terrible but fabulous examples, and we'll move on from there. So if Deb is ready, we'll have breakout rooms. Oops, I see wait one question from Phyllis, go ahead. Just to be clear, these examples we give of great actions, are they supposed to be ones we've been in or just anything we know about? It's anything that you know about. So it's something that already happened. You may have been part of it. You maybe saw a photo in a newspaper. Okay. It doesn't matter, but tell us, what it was and why you could, why I thought it was so great or so bad. <laughs> yes, excellent. All right, I think we should go into our breakout groups and you'll have, uh, let's say nine minutes to talk to each other, meet each other and tell stories. We'll see you back here in nine minutes. All right, welcome back. I hope you had a brief but e exciting time talking with each other. Welcome back. Um, would love to know and great to see more smiling faces here. I would love I saw people typing in the in the slide deck. And for those of you joining again, I will actually I hope your fellow uh, folks participants shared, but there it is again in the 
chat. You should be able to access this slide deck and type into it yourself. So I'm really interested to hear a story or two that you thought was would be worth repeating for the big group. Does anybody from one of the breakout groups want to share a great example that you thought would be great to share with others? I'd love it if you'd unmute. You could just unmute and chat or raise your hand, but we'll just ask you to unmute and let us know. Hello. I didn't got enough uh, time to uh, uh, share my thoughts into the breakout room, but I can, if, if you allow me, uh, I can surely do so. Sure. Great. So uh, after the, during the pandemic, I realized that there, there is something wrong with the corporate world and, uh, and the people. Uh, those two years, I've been researching what I can do to uh, lower my corporate dependency uh, about the consumerism, my dependency uh, towards the corporates, because corporates are the ones who are, the, who are actually uh, making planet unlivable. So uh, during the pandemic, I came up with the thought of wow, what if we uh, form a company where workers are actually owning the company and they are uh, they where we uh, actually building the plan where we promoting ethical consumption, not the consumerism, not the ethical consumerism, but ethical consumption, where the uh, where all the means are redistributed, uh, it, it will be run on a commons movement. Uh, if you know about the commons movement. Uh, slowly, people started uh, talking with me. Uh, the, the thing got promoted in the University of Mumbai and uh, some Indian institutes of uh, technology and management. And a lot of good people came to me and they thought that's a good, that's a good idea and they are ready to invest uh, in this idea. Uh, Luckily, uh, I'm, I'm getting uh, some traction uh, be because I have to live up uh, with the liberal ideas, with the socialist ideas, uh, uh, with the progressive ideas as well. And a lot many people think uh, the initiative uh, that we are working on is, is, is more sustainable. And uh, I didn't knew actually that uh, this small idea will uh, uh, will impact the huge amount of impression onto the people's brain. And uh, I'm so shocked that people do uh, talk about this thing often. And, and I uh, really feel uh, uh, grateful uh, for the pe people's initiative. Nice. So, Zegar, that's that's a wonderful story. Is there any particular kind of ethical consumption? What kind of business is this going to be? To be frank, it is literally a copy of private businesses, but it is distributed to the people. For example, if there is an e-commerce website, it is owned by a private company. I'm ah. literally copying that same e-commerce website, but I'm distributing whole the means to the people. Great. Great. So that's that's awesome. You know, uh, in some countries in the United States, we call this B corporations, B for benefit, benefit corporations. And in some places, a lot of these things are worker-owned cooperatives, which is really fabulous. Um, thank you for sharing that story. And I see, um, I will say there are, we in, anticipate that there would be many stories, too many to tell right now, but because these Google Slides are going to be accessible to you later, you can see that you can go back and research, and some folks have even put links in, uh, so that you can follow up and images, <laughs> don't let Coke choke the oceans, a little bit of uh, culture jamming there with the Coca-Cola logo and poisoning uh, the waters. Uh, this is fabulous, right on slide number eight, for example, from the Fantastic Four. Great job, Fantastic Four. <laughs> All right, Mercy. And um, I see I wrote the little note that you just shared with us, um, Sagar, into slide number nine. Um, if you want to put a link in there, feel free to do that. So that's great. 
So I think this is a good moment actually to move on. We'll come back to more creative ideas in just a second, but we're gonna um, uh, leave this slide deck and actually go and take a big picture view of creative actions um, from all over the world. And then we'll do some planning of our own. So um, here's the slide deck. You can see the screen share. I'm just gonna run through this one. This one we can do in, in um, presentation mode. Um, and you can see we'll start off right away with just a little bit of an overview about Beautiful Trouble. And um, some of you may know about Beautiful Trouble. Any thumbs up? Who, who already knows about Beautiful Trouble? I see a few thumbs up. A little people who don't know. Well, great. This will be a great conversation. Um, it started off as a book that was written almost about 10 years ago called Beautiful Trouble, written by 70, 70 activists and artists and organizers from around the world. And it turned into many other things, a training network, a website that's available in eight languages, Russian, uh, Arabic, Spanish, Portuguese, French, English. What am I forgetting? I don't even remember. But when we go to the website, uh, late, you can check it out later. We have even a card game that you can play, and we're going to be playing an actual card game today that I prepared for us to play online. Um, and the thing about, oh, and I'll say a few other things. If you go online, many of the resources are available for free. Unfortunately, you have to buy the books, but all the items, all the entries are online for free. There's a Pan-Africanism guide, study guide. And you'll see on slide number four, if we move to the next slide, that we have other specialty things happening. And in particular, I'm going to point out right now that we have a Get Up, Rise Up or Guru Direct Action Fund, where we offer very small grants, but rapid response for direct action. And you can find that on our link to it on our website as well, plus a lot of other resources for trainers, facilitators, and planners in the Beautiful Action Trainers module, all free for download. But what I would like to talk about right now on the next slide is that the Beautiful Trouble has a superpower, just like all of you um, and all of us, I should say. And the superpower of Beautiful Trouble is that like many other groups, we start with the stories of resistance, the stories of creative actions that people have done, but we don't stop there because we find that it's in order to make it more accessible, more usable, we tease out the lessons, the principles, the theories, the tactics, the methodologies, right, that have made them really work for different groups. And so that's the superpower of Beautiful Trouble. We have these stories that we start with, but we tease out these principles and theories that make it much more accessible for you. And our commitment to translating things into multiple languages is also part of that accessibility commitment. All right, so let's go to the next stop. We're going to take a look in this slideshow. I'm gonna go very quickly, um, but like I said, all of this is available on the Beautiful Trouble website in some form or other. Um, we're gonna start by looking at some creative uh, tactics and principles and theories of tactics. And you'll notice from this strategic planning pyramid that really tactics and implementation plans are things that you, there's many of them. They're on the bottom of the planning pyramid. If you use something like this, it's familiar, but whatever kind of planning you do, you'll first wanna start by having a vision and values. Then you wanna know what your purpose is, your mission, and then you will get to assessment and campaign planning. And we like to talk about tactics because they're sexy and cool and fun and, and just fabulous. But if you don't start with, a, or if they don't feed into a vision and a campaign plan, you don't always end up where you want to. So as an artist, I feel like I can say this, we really need to be careful about doing things that deliver on our strategic planning. And we'll also learn a little bit about a strategic tool called points of intervention a little later on. So we're gonna jump right in, we'll go to the next slide. So one of the things um, that we find that is really important um, for activists, one of the basic principles, particularly for climate and environmental activists, is that we need to make the invisible visible. We need to help people see the problem. Here's a great example from India. This is an example of a living billboard, if you will. When they put the billboard up, these lungs were white. And over time, they actually filtered the air pollution out and turned black to physically make the air pollution problem visible. 
let's go to the next one. You can see in the next slide, more examples of making the invisible visible. Does anybody want to unmute and tell me if you recognize any of these images? I do. Yeah, what do you see? So the one underwater, I think that was either Seychelles, Seychelles or Madagascar. I don't remember the exact country, but where they had a cabinet meeting underwater to show that this is affecting us. For you, it's a climate, it's a the climate has changed, but for us, it's a crisis. Our land is disappearing. So I thought that was really cool coming from the government. Yes, right. This is actually the Maldives. And believe it or not, they did this in 2009. That's a long time ago. They're the lowest lying country. The Seychelles are pretty low too, but these guys are lower right on sea level. They've lost a lot of their property. They held a parliament meeting underwater. The one with the white line at the top are some people in New York doing a project that has been done all over the world, painting the high water line that could happen if the sea level rises, right? And then mm -hmm. um, the Rebel for Life is a boat that is high and dry in the middle of a financial district. This is a um, was a shutdown DC extinction rebellion action in Washington DC, but this has happened, these kinds of actions have happened all over the world to show what would happen if sea level would rise and also to blockade the financial institutions so that they will do something. Let's go to the next slide. Another really important principle that we find in the work that we do is to uh, follow the lead of those who are on the front lines, those who are most impacted. And this is an example also showing some beautiful puppets and some fabulous traditional dress of youth, of a youth led action in Washington DC because they have an image a vision of the tar sands and the pipelines as a black snake destroying their country. And they feel like they need to stop the black snake. And so this was a hundred meter long, a 300 foot long pipeline snake that stopped traffic and went to the regulating agency in Washington, DC, taking leadership from the vision that the youth had that was necessary to stop the black snake. Let's go to the next one. Another really, really important one is to celebrate and to see joy and fun and engagement, community efforts as a revolutionary force. This is a particular example of residents from New Orleans marching in Washington, DC in the seat of power with the traditional brass band and fabulous music on Earth Day of a couple of years ago. Actually last year, I guess it was 2021. So always fabulous. Oh, next slide. This one is a favorite of mine. This slide is about action logic. Now, um, does anybody recognize either one of these pictures? Go ahead and unmute if, and just shout it out if you do. One is from the civil rights movement, uh, the sit-ins at the lunch counters. That, I forget what the store was. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Tells the story. Uh, so action framing, it tells the story perfectly. If you were alive in the United States then, and certainly most of us today would recognize in the United States this picture of students desegregating a lunch counter. Now, what about that green broom thing? What are those green? Who can guess? What do you think is happening with that green brooms on the beach? Anybody? You can write it in the chat. You can unmute and just shout it out. What do you got? I'm going to wait. Maybe it it they want, sorry, go, go ahead. They want to clean the ocean. That's one guess. What else? Maybe each broom represents the, year, the number of years it would take for all the plastic to be out of the ocean. Wow, these are great ideas. And this protest fails at action logic because it has nothing to do with this. It is a protest <laughs> against corruption in Brazil. And actually, Deb, who's on here is a Brazilian. I don't know if she ever saw this, but um, this action is doesn't have any logic because the picture doesn't tell the story. It's a powerful picture if it was about ocean cleanup, but it's about cleaning up government. So this is a good and bad example of action logic when you take when you're doing your work. Let's go to the next one really quickly. Prefigurative politics or putting in place the future that you want actually is another picture at the top is from Brazil where people are planting a garden in a parking spot on parking day. And on the bottom is a resistance to a pipeline in the United States. People built a barn 
right on the trajectory, right on the pathway of the pipeline, and eventually put solar panels on top of that barn. So not only did it block the pipeline, but it also modeled the future that we wanted. That's prefigurative. Next slide. And sometimes, no matter what we do, we don't get what we want, and we have to engage in some kind of direct action, right? Challenging things. Now, here's two examples. One is um, a, it looks like a big camp or an occupation that's in Brazil. That's the landless movement, Movimiento Santiago, in Brazil, who occupies land and starts farming collectively and building a community there using that property, putting in place the future that they want. And then, of course, there's another great example of somebody creating a bike lane with a stencil. I think this is a picture actually from the UK. Pretty great. Next one, let's go. The next one. Oh, we're, we're gonna look at a couple of actions around framing. And framing is really about telling the story that we want, right? And so everybody knows about the climate deadline, right? If we don't do something about how much fossil fuels are burned, we're, we have a deadline. But you can also see this as a lifeline and a, a little project called the Climate Clock, actually a big project, has matched the deadline with a lifeline because we find that often people are much more mobilized by the thought of being able to positively change things. So that's a framing question. There's also handheld clocks. There's giant clocks that you can see, one in New York, one in Berlin, et cetera, on this picture. Another framing action is in the next slide. And this is about um, relabeling things that happen in the name of progress as crime scenes, right? So in this case, you can see um, a forest crime scene, you can see a fossil fuel crime scene, where instead of praising the capitalist structure that is destroying things, we're calling it a crime scene because it's actually violating people's human rights, right? All right, let's keep going. Oh, and a really favorite one, very easy to do during pandemics. Actually, it turns out our guerrilla projections. There's two examples here. One is from Myanmar with the three finger salute, and one is from the United States, Black Lives Matter projecting on a white supremacist statue. Very powerful. And this is related to the next slide, culture jamming. How do you use cultural icons and things to change what the story is? Does anybody recognize anything that's in this picture? Mm, the hands may tale for women's rights. Yes, exactly, right? So there was a book written a long time ago in the 80s, and because it became popular called The Handmaid's Tale on the Hulu channel, you could not, for a while, you could use these um, images to talk about uh, women's rights in the United States. Not so popular right now for a number of reasons, but it was a way to use that cultural icon. And the panties power is a way to use a superstition in Myanmar they believe that if uh, the generals touched women's underwear, it would take away their power. So women mailed a lot of underwear. This also used humor to the generals to try and take away their power in Myanmar. And of course, we see uh, football or uh, United States football people taking a knee to protest for Black Lives Matter in support of the rights of Black people in the United States. Now, there's lots of ways to do it, but you have to know your culture, right? So make sure you do it something that will work within your community. Next slide shows the power of ritual. And this is also climate related. Um, we find that a lot of people have to deal with their deep emotional sadness and anger around what will be lost if climate change happens. And people created the ritual of the climate ribbon where you write things on ribbons and hang them in a ritualistic way um, in a structure. In this case, it's a tree. This is from the cop that was in Paris. And we find that this really helps people to process and then move to action. Next slide. Oh, another really fabulous thing to keep in mind. Who, who can tell me what's happening in this picture? What do you think is happening in this photo? See people in scrubs, they have a stretcher, they've got boxes. What do you think is going on? Shout They're it out. They're delivering petitions about something about healthcare. Yes, right? So you don't even really need to know. This one has great action logic and it's creative mm -hmm. petition delivery. I love the fact that there's an IV hooked up to these boxes. <laughs> That's funny, right? And it is the National Health Service in the UK, right? That's a protest in the UK, but it reads really across borders. The next mm -hmm. slide um, talks about clandestine leafleting and also um, currency hacking, where uh, the little ping pong balls are floating down the stairs 
in Syria when resistance was too dangerous to be public. People wrote messages on the ping pong balls. They were let go down the streets of Damascus. So the people knew that there was resistance happening, but it was very low risk. And the same thing, you know, everybody uses money. You can write messages on money and get it out there. You have to be careful in some places it's illegal, but if you're doing it in your own home or someplace safe, no one's going to know that you wrote on your money and it can go take a message out into the street in a clandestine way. I have a couple more and then we're going to uh, talk about these things. So the next one I just put in here, another kind of creative disruption, but this lot, one is an online example. I have two little online examples. And this one is about... Um, K-pop, Korean pop music fans who wanted to support Black Lives Matter protests in the United States. And in Dallas, Texas, the police had set up a iWatch app and they asked for people to tell on each other, to report protesters and send in videos. And instead of doing that, people from all over the world sent in videos of K-pop music and overloaded the police force and destroyed their ability to uh, harass protesters. So this was a great example of international solidarity and a way to do online creative disruption. The next slide I just wanted to talk about quickly because this can be applied in so many ways. In Russia, actually, there's a, people sometimes use satellite navigation systems and they let people report in what's happening where they are, right? If there's a traffic problem or something. And the Russians were using this uh, um, app to, re to complain about the Russian government. <laughs> and so it was became very much a political statement. People were using this application and complaining about what was happening on this popular satellite navigation tool. So I just wanted to share those online examples and, and uh, in this huge quick overview of principles, theories, and tactics that go into different kinds of creative action around the world. Now we're gonna drop out of that slide deck and we're gonna go back into the other slide deck and do a little um, thinking maybe or sharing about what you take away from this quick overview and the stories that you told each other. So on slides 11 and 12, there are blank sticky notes. And I would love it if you wanna type into one of those sticky notes. What are you taking away from this slideshow? Is there an idea? Did something come to you of something you might wanna do? Is there another example of something you want to share? Um, is there some principle that jumped out? Feel free to do that. You can also type in the chat if you want. And of course, you can raise your hand and um, we'll call on you. B8, are you, are, B80, are you wanting to raise your hand? I see fingers. Would you like to unmute and talk? You're muted though. Uh, how do I write on the sticky notes? You go into the Google Doc. I'll put it back in here again. And you should just have access and be able to click okay. on a sticky note and write in it. Okay, thank you. This is great. And I see people are putting other things in here. Yeah, great. Thanks. And you can type in either 11 or 12. We'll keep it. Oh, action logic is super important. Yeah, Russian navigation thing is inspiring. It is fun, huh? Co-opting the oppressor's tools, really great, yeah. What else have we got? Anybody else want to unmute and tell a story or, or comment on something that you're thinking about creativity-wise? Love the petition delivery. I know, right? We do petitions. They're not that, sometimes they're powerful, sometimes they're not. But if we use the delivery mechanism, it's even better, right? Something more creative. I know someone who uh, delivered a paper, an actual petition on a on a small disc, but put it in a giant container, a thing to look like a container ship <laughs> instead. Did it as a blockade. Excellent. Educate, agitate, organize. Great. What else do people want to share? Anybody else want to uh, unmute and chat? Lots of great ideas. Has anybody done any of these things or something similar? Uh, 
All right. Well, we're going to get deep into it now as well. So let's uh, take all of this thought and all of this uh, overview picture of creative actions, good and bad. And um, you can keep typing in these slides, obviously, but we're going to jump into the next part of this work. And that is a mission, should you choose to accept it. It's a game we call the card storm. And you might remember, you, uh, you can look at slide 14, right? There's stories, there's tactics, there's principles, theories, and methodologies that Beautiful Trouble is based on. And what we're going to do is invite you all, because, and it's written down on slide 13, because you are working with Beautiful, tr beautiful Trouble, <laughs> because you're working with 350 and you're working on climate, we know that you have a vision of a future that's just, that's prosperous, that's equitable and safe from the effects of climate crisis, right? This is our big, big picture. And we also have more immediate campaign goals, right? We wanna stop all the new coal, oil and gas projects that we can. We wanna build 100% renewables and we wanna follow the leadership of those who are most impacted. And we wanna support an equitable transition. So keeping all of that in mind, remember that strategic planning pyramid where we want to know our vision and our campaign goals. We're now going to go into breakouts and we're going to brainstorm actions using prompts from the Beautiful Trouble cards. So if you look at slide 15, for example, um, you can see that there's a theory, a tactic, and a principle. In fact, slide 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, they all have the same theory, tactic, and principle but they're different ones. And we're going to help you be creative because it turns out that it's easier to be creative when you have a box to get out of, not all the time in the world, not all the resources in the world, not every which way to go, but you have to have a little spark. So these are your sparks should you choose to use them. And each group, each breakout group will get one of these slides. You'll have three cards, one theory, one principle, one tactic, and you'll use them to think about creating an action or an event that will help move you towards your vision and address one of your campaign goals. If um, you can pick uh, one of the slide hands, so any of the slides between 16, no, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, you can pick any of those hands and try to work with it, right? And see if you can come up with creative actions using those prompts. For more information about these cards, I wanna point out to you that under each of them in the notes section are links to the website where there's even more information about each theory, each tactic, each principle. And if you're actually using two devices, you can hold your phone up to your computer or vice virtue and the QR code there will send you into the Beautiful Trouble toolbox and you can read it in different languages. All right, I'm gonna take a, a check and see if this all makes sense. Cause when we break out, um, we're gonna break out for about uh, 10 minutes to give yourselves a chance to brainstorm. And again, there'll be four or five people in each group. It'll probably be different groups. On slide 24, 25, you can write and take notes of what you're thinking about your actions might be. And if you can use all three things as a prompt, that's great. If you only use one of the cards, that's also fine. All right, can we have some thumbs up or questions about what we're doing? I think Phyllis said thumbs up. What who else we got? Anybody else? Are you with me? Elif, thumbs up. Austin's thumbs up. All I right. A, I have a question. What do the Remind me again, what do the P, T, B, N, E, S in the upper left-hand corner mean? Um, they actually refer to translations, okay. Portuguese, uh, Burmese, Spanish, but you don't have to worry about that at all. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's great. These We do this with lots of groups all over the world, and so sometimes it matters. <laughs> Great. So we're going to go into groups. I think we might have, uh, yeah, three groups. I don't know. We'll see. Um, Deb, what we should do. Three groups of uh, approximately it's four. Three people. groups. One, one with five people, two Perfect. with four. Perfect. Great. And we're going to take 10 minutes and then 
We will come back and we'll share our ideas. And feel free to take notes in those slides that are below and have open blocks. Okay, we will start the breakouts now. Excellent. Excellent. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a fun time brainstorming with the beautiful trouble cards as inspiration. Looks like there were some busy, busy minds here. So I see in slide number 25 that there's some ideas. So who uh, would like to share? Tell us which group it is um, and share maybe something that you wrote here. Can someone unmute and talk us through it? Give us one example. Um, Luna, do you want to share your um, this making the, the the receipts of the ingredients? Luna, are you able to unmute and talk? Anybody else you want to share? You could share. <laughs> I, I'll share. I just, uh, she was one who had that idea. So, um, you know, how you get very long receipts at CVS, you could show um, in the, you know, ask for the receipts or some kind of a, a visible indication of all the ingredients of products that are bad for you from chemical companies and showing it, you know, at the bottom, total cost equals people's lives. So it looks like this group that wrote in slide number 25 was working on um, chemicals, right? And chemical safety issues, perhaps, right? Yeah, it was just, uh, we took the uh, um, gorilla projection, that, that slide and making the invisible visible and just came up with some ideas. Great. And um, does this uh, uh, fit into the, how does this fit into the vision of um, the just prosperous, equitable and safe from the effects of climate crisis work? Or did you not think about that? We didn't get that far. <laughs> so you were just brainstorming creative actions. Uh, yeah, and I was typing as fast as I could. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, excellent. And um, all right, so we have some creative action ideas from this group using guerrilla projection, making invisible visible. Love the ideas about uh, this kind of work. It's possible that you, and we'll talk about this in a minute, you might be able to do similar things focusing on climate, making the connections between these toxic chemicals and climate pollution, right? So what about one of the other groups? Do you, did you come up with any ideas and which, or, and you can also tell us about any cards that you were using or theories or principles or tactics that you were discussing. Anybody else wanna share? Even if you didn't get to write it down, what, what were you working on? Phoebe, were you, are you raising your hand? I can't tell. I see fingers. Okay. This is Phyllis. Um, there was just two of us that were active in this group. The others weren't able to talk. Um, and we um, we were looking at the capitalism one to start with mm. and um, seeing it was, um, well, most of the things that we thought of couldn't be done in Turkey. But um, so that was difficult, but we, Came, well, came up with some ideas that, that could work, uh, maybe in a small way. And I certainly am not used to the kind of restrictions that there are in Turkey. Um, so maybe I'm not the best person <laughs> for that. But what, oh yeah, I remember now I'm looking at it. One thing we did talk about was how important it says training for the win, how you want to uh, train when you're gonna do a creative disruption on capitalism. Um, that means like a lot of, rehearsal so um 
the other person in with me in the thing was talking about one time she went to a demonstration and then someone was there who didn't read and had all these you know facts that she couldn't answer because she'd never heard of the opposite viewpoint before and they were probably lies but she didn't have any backup to say to explain why those are lies so that we, we thought that's a really good principle that you should do role playing you should be really well prepared for the other side nice really nice and in fact i mean this one is really interesting um so you were talking about actions that you could do in turkey and so um as we went over in the slideshow, in some places, because of limitations or repressive regimes, we need to be careful what we do. And so instead of like gathering everybody in a mass location that makes people vulnerable, you might do distributed actions that is, are less vulnerable or actions that wheat pasting in the middle of the night or writing on money or ping pong balls down the street or, or online things while you build up your capacity to take on greater risk because it's really important to be there another day, right? So this is really important to think about. And training is a big piece of that. In fact, we know that training is one of the key elements or key characteristics of successful campaigns and successful movements. And training for the win is an interesting thing. Training not just to prepare people, which is obviously, like you just mentioned, so important. How do we train people to have more... Uh, respectful dialogue? How do we train people in role plays with dealing with police and authorities? How do we train people to uh, practice if they're going to hang a banner or blockade and use a lock? You have to practice, right? That piece is really important. But doing training, let's say, in the middle of a street as a blockade or doing training to prepare people um, in ways that could be considered resistance uh, in addition to actually preparing people at, uh, in a quiet way is also really a valuable thing to think about. So it's the whole spectrum of work that we do. Yeah, it's really appreciate that. Excellent. Um, any other comments or thoughts? What about the other group? Was there something you wanted to share from the third group? Love to hear what you were thinking about it. And tell us if it was hard or easy to use these cards. Yeah. Is that our group? Yeah. Um, I My attention got caught by um, the card that said uh, the divestment. So I talked a bit about an action that happened here in Montreal in November, where um, different groups here in Montreal um, basically uh, attacked the big five big Canadian banks that are most invested in fossil fuels, um, and especially Royal Bank of Canada, where there was a big action with, with Extinction Rebellion and uh, Divest McGill. Um, in front of the headquarters of RBC, where we uh, disguised as oil workers, we spilled paint that was supposed to be oil. Um, we uh, accused them of um, uh, making dirty money and to divest from fossil fuels. We got a lot of uh, press attention. And this whole thing is still going on. There's a local group here in my area that stands in front of the local brands of RBC every week. and. Uh, calls for divestment from fossil fuels. And they were so rattled by it that they actually took a, a major ad out in the paper, a whole page to say how environmentally friendly they were. So That's great. that was a fun action too. <laughs> right, and so it's we have a lot of elements here that are worth highlighting, right? So we have art and activism matching up. You've got dressed up as oil workers. You made an oil spill. You had a persistence, you were committed over time. You came back on different weeks. You also, um, uh, it sounds like you did different ways of reaching out to people, um, bringing in multiple groups to work together, building a coalition. So that sounds great, right? Ha having all this experience there and you could probably do this again, right? Yeah. We have that, we know that the, a new cop is coming up, the climate conference is coming up. We know that the youth climate strike is coming up on September 23rd. I'm from Washington, D.C. Next week, we have a big action highlighting another pipeline, the Mountain Valley Pipeline in Washington, D.C., with locals coming in. So it goes on and on, and there's lots of examples of way that we can do it. So let's take this 
information and talk a little bit about a tool that we could use to help us think about doing more effective actions at different places in the um, structures that cause the problems, let's say. So this uh, tool is called the Points of Intervention. And we like it because it helps us think strategically in a broader way about where we can have impact, where we can actually intervene in the problem. So again, the problem that we're talking about, right, is we want to work on our big vision, a future that's just, prosperous, equitable, safe from the effects of climate crisis. We want to stop new coal and oil and gas projects. We want to build renewables. And we want to do all of this, taking the leadership from those who are on the front lines and most impacted, and while we support an equitable transition. So keeping all of that in mind, right, let's talk about these different points of intervention. First of all, we're going to fill in the places themselves. And secondly, we'll think about the action. So for example, a place of production is where things are produced. So if we're talking about the fossil fuel industry, where would things be produced? And we could type right in the slide. If you're in it, you can put it in the chat and you can also raise your hand or just shout out. So where, uh, it could be a coal mine, right? That might be one place. Where else? Anybody have another idea about where production happens in this world? Oil well. Could be an oil well, right? Um, and if we're also talking about renewables, it could be a solar facility, right? Right? Maybe we're going to promote a solar industry. I'm gonna, you can keep typing, but I'm going to talk about all six of these, and then we'll dig in a little more. So a point of destruction, and there might be overlaps here, right? So if you're thinking about a point of destruction in this world, where could that be? Where would things be destroyed? And again, it might be another fossil fuel, it might be fossil fuel uh, infrastructure, right? Yeah. In any kind of it, right? Could be a well. Was, yep, go ahead. I was thinking of people's lungs are getting destroyed. <laughs> oh my goodness, of course. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, the, yeah. Biodiversity gets destroyed. Absolutely. In the forests, in the yeah. rainforests, in the people's communities, people's all kinds of things, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And you can see this like any good brainstorm. There's only one rule here. What's the one rule of a brainstorm? Who knows it? Don't say that's no good. There's no no's, right? So if somebody says, well, we're going to, uh, you know, get a giant blimp and we're going to fly all over the world and blah, 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 blah. You say, yeah, yeah, sure. And maybe also we'll have some small hot air balloons. Um, and then maybe somebody else will say, maybe we'll just have a couple of balloons. And that's something you can actually do, right? But you don't worry about saying no, you just keep going with the ideas. Okay. So how about a point of consumption? Where do we see consumption? Gas um, station. Oh yeah, gas station. Where else? Heating homes and other buildings. Home heating, sure. Airports. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Airports. Wow. Okay, so that's easy. It keeps going, right? <laughs> Where do people refineries? Go ahead. Type, keep type, you can type in there. I type some of them, but how do I type in there? I'm lost. Oh, I know. I'm looking at yours instead of mine. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then how about yeah, point of decision. Somebody's moving on. Where are decisions made about these things? Head offices. Go ahead. Head offices. Head offices, Head offices. corporate offices, right? Yeah, corporate offices, yeah. And what about COP? <laughs> right? We have these international things, yes. state legislatures, right. international oil companies. Also, if we're thinking about this, I would argue that maybe we even have decisions made in educational institutions. Yes. Right? That take money. Or if we think about it, um, you know, art, <laughs> we know there's been a huge, huge program on divestment of art uh, exhibits and museums from fossil fuel money, they try to clean up their image by investing in nice things, right? Mm -hmm. Which takes us to another interesting one, assumption, point of assumption. So assumptions might be a physical place, but mo often we get to the physical space by thinking about an assumption that we make, like we must have fossil fuels in order to survive. 
and have our current way of life or that our current way of life is the only thing that matters or that progress requires use of fossil fuels, right? So assumptions uh, are very interesting uh, things to think about because it helps us challenge the underpinning of the cultural reliance of the institutions. So um, one is obviously that fossil fuels are necessary for our way of life or that progress is necessary, right? Yeah. For all progress is good, right? Uh, also that we will miraculously have a new technology that will save us. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. technology will save us. <laughs> yeah, what else? Assumptions also that the governments are know what's good for us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also that fossil fuels are not that bad. Oh yes, that coal can be clean, right? Yeah. Yeah. We need coal. Ah, right. Did you come here on horseback or in a car? <laughs> uh, we need fossil fuels for jobs. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Typing in, right? There's tons and tons of things to think about. Yeah. All right. Now, the another thing to think about is the last one is an opportunity. So you might, lots of people use this tool. We like the sixth box here of opportunity because it helps us identify things that are kind of one off. So for example, maybe the head of a big oil company is coming to speak at your university or your town, or maybe hmm. you have an international day of celebration like Human Rights Day, and you can turn that into a statement about how the fossil fuel industries violate human rights as they dig up our planet. Or it's something about a, a, you know, a specific time, uh, a particular holiday, an, an opening, an opportunity that could happen in, your, in, in a place or time that's not covered in other things. There are other I things. Can... Go ahead. Sorry, I can smell the pepper gas already. <laughs> yep yep oh god we need to get you a good mask <laughs> yeah um and uh it all makes me my eyes water already the uh, so you can see that this is a tool that can help us branch out and think uh it helps us also think about the life cycle for example when we also think about places um you might come and think about transportation even up here might yes. be um, mm -hmm. something like the cars and the trucks and the trains and the way the pipelines that are moving these things, right? So you can keep typing production, destruction, consumption, decision, assumption, opportunity. As you can see, this could go on for a while and get very exciting. And then we also might want to brainstorm the actions that we could do at those places, right? A particular place. So there's something that you might do at an airport, for example, that you wouldn't do at a school, um, right? If you have this mm. listed. Um, and it it also doesn't have to be so literal, some of these things. But uh, anybody have an idea, that, uh, one idea of an action that could happen in a place? like Of production? Any of these things, I'm open oh, to it. okay. How about I'm just typing banks and funders as a decision point. There's some really great things where you could have a party in a bank lobby where you stage someone pulling their money out, withdrawing from the bank, right? You can make a big party um, when someone pulls money out of a bank, for example. Uh -huh. And if it was really a, a real investor who really had a lot of money in it, that would they would pay some attention to that. Right, some champagne. Exactly. So, anybody have another idea about something that could happen in here? Well, in Germany, they do those things with the people dressed in the white Tyvek suits, and they just like invaded the coal, the strip mine coal places. So, no, no and then they locked down to the machine, so no action could. So, this is like an occupation lockdown. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, lockdown. I I think somewhere in the US, some people um, went physically into a pipeline. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's idea. also happened in the UK as well. Yeah. Underground. 
So there's a lot of things you could do here, right? And you could go even to a library or something and do some education if you wanted with places. So you can see how this can help branch out your thinking when we're even when we're playing a game. For example, we're going to do another round of this with the same idea. And this time, um, we're not going to look at the second. I have another tool in here, which we're not going to look at. We don't really have time. But it's a fabulous tool, the Spectrum of Allies, to help you figure out the superpower of who, which groups you want to reach because we win our campaigns by moving people one pie slice closer to our side. We don't focus on the extreme opponents because we don't have all the time and energy and money to change all those people, but we can marginalize them and isolate them and move the neutrals into act passives and the passive into actives onto our side. And that's how we win. And that's a tool I'll leave you to use on your own. So what we're going to do, though, is go back into our groups. This time, we're going to go into the same groups, basically. So I hope people can communicate. And we're going to bring, pick a different slide to use. Challenge yourself by picking a different deck uh, hand of cards, a different uh, theory, principle, and tactic. It's the same vision. Like we're trying to work on climate change. And this time, you should assume that you're a group that works together. Like it, it could be in Turkey. It could be in the US. could be wherever. And you are trying to do something to either raise up awareness or work on supporting the youth climate strike on the 23rd of September or what's happening in, uh, I believe it's uh, Morocco, right? Where the, or is it Tunisia? Where's the COP this year? Egypt. Egypt, Egypt. Egypt. that's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. I have too many other things going on. We have a climate camp happening in Tunisia. That's what's happening. Okay, climate action camp in Tunisia. So we're talking about Egypt, right? So if, if you don't have to go to Egypt, it could be something, uh, but you do it in your own place to think about what you will support getting people to work on issues around climate. So we're gonna, this one, we will hopefully get into our groups pretty quickly. Again, take some notes if you wouldn't mind. Um, I'll make some copies of the slide. So there are places to take notes. And um, feel free to brainstorm uh, all kinds of action ideas that you can do with the inspiration from one of the deck hands of cards that are on now slide 30 through 37. Or pick and choose if you want, but it would be great to use a principle, tactic, and theory to inspire your work. All right, welcome back, folks. I hope this was uh, productive. It looks like people were typing away. So we are going to take a look uh, really quickly. Um, what came up for folks this time around? Was it easier? Was it harder? Did you have ideas? Uh, what do you want to share? I see there's um, notes in 38 and notes in 39. Who would like to start? Somebody want to tell us what your, something from 38 that stands I can, out? I can do 38. Great. Uh, so we chose the slide that had breakfast is persuasive culture jamming and prefigurative politics. So we're thinking about a plant based diet and how that really helps with climate change. So we thought about having a community garden, providing plant based meals at schools on Mondays and give context to the kids like why is this good for the planet. Uh, we also thought about making a bunch of stickers to put on packages of bacon, showing like the excessive land and water use, deforestation, methane production, so that people like really see where they get their bacon and then maybe uh, get a video of some of their reactions. And for the prefigurative politics, uh, we were thinking about having uh, some of the kids in the schools with these uh, plant-based options. Uh, or meals, having them like uh, paint a mural or write about what kind of world they want to have so that they can like think for themselves, right? Not that, okay, you have to do this, but what, what do you want to see in the world, right? So yeah, that's what we, we wrote in our slide. Yeah, this is great. Thank you so much for this. And it's really fun to think about breakfast as persuasive as being able to provide what people need as a way to talk about the issues that are affecting their lives. And in particular, the challenge here is always to make sure that people understand uh, in, my, in our framework uh, that the connection of individual actions is critical to make to the systemic 
problems and the systemic changes that we want, right? So even if all of us turned into vegetarians, I mean, that would put the meat business out of business, which would be good. But that what we would really need to be clear about is that we want to change the way we do our agriculture, change the way we do our meat farming, right? So making sure that there's a clear connection to the system yeah. too that we're working on. So thank you for this work. Uh, round of applause for group number one. Yeah. Woohoo. How about uh, the group who wrote in slide 39? What do we got in 39? Looks like fun here. Ice cube paper mache. What do we got? Who I wants to tell about that part? This is Phyllis. Um, just something came to me thinking about action logic. It, it would be obvious if maybe what you're talking about, if you had a great big paper mache ice cube and you're holding it up against a, 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 a globe. And then Luna suggested, or, or on like a corporate CEO uh, person who say, you know, cool down your greed. Um, yeah. And then uh, we also had the discussion about how not um, humor can backfire sometimes. Um, and people have such a good time like making fun of somebody say like Trump uh, or that you increase polarization in the society because then the people that support him are like, oh, you think you're better than us. And then they're, they fall prey to all kinds of things. Yeah. So it's humor is good. You want to be careful not to to go into that thing. Right. People often talk about polarizing to organize. So in other words, you want to make sure people can see the difference in the two perspectives. And then uh, oftentimes people say compromise to win, mm. uh, which is an interesting way to understand that we still will have to live with each other in the future, oh, right? Yeah. And how do we dialogue? How do we build groups that are strong and resilient, right? How do we learn how to talk to each other and work together? That's part of how to talk to different people. And then how to talk to people who are on opposite sides and to make sure that we can move forward uh, to change what we need to change. So it's really great things to think about. And sometimes humor can go either way, right? Phyllis, were you gonna add something? I was going to say, because I've organized landowners in rural Wisconsin against pipelines, and most of them are Trump supporters, but they don't want that pipeline going through their land. And then the other half, more or less, of the groups that we organized are um, Sierra Club members, so wow. they're environmentalists. And so from the get-go, we had to say it and repeat it quite a few times, that we don't agree on everything, but we do agree that we don't want this pipeline. So we're going to just talk about the things that unite us and not talk about the things that, that divide us. And really the biggest problem was with, with the people, sorry, let me turn that off, uh, was with the people who um, you know, hate Trump um, because they just really wanted to talk about that a lot. And we just had to keep repeating that. We're not gonna talk about that now. That's great. And I will say, I'm just going to point this out here, because one of the things we find is that when we start a group, um, it's really important to have a principles or value statement. And it doesn't have to be defined as Republicans versus Democrats, but it has to be defined in a way that will bring people together. And you don't have to have these arguments over and over again on a Republican or Democrat side, but you can say, we're here because we're protecting our land. And that's what this group is for. And if you want to join that group, you have to agree to that. And then you don't have to have that argument. The other people can join another group or start another group. So it's a very interesting way to approach organizing. Mm -hmm. right? Doesn't work for everybody. Oh, I, I agree, but I just say you still have to remind people. It's not that they want to leave another group. You just have to remind them. Absolutely. I really, round of applause for this group. And I hope you all enjoyed this brief look into the beautiful Trouble Toolbox. I encourage you on your own time to dig deep and it's a rabbit hole of really fun things. We have a few minutes left. And in this few minutes, I wanna um, take this opportunity to point out slide number 40. What are you taking away from this session? And yeah, um, you can unmute and speak if you want. You can type in the chat or you can type right into one of these sticky notes, click on a sticky note, type right in it. I'll point out in slide 41 and 42 are links to um, 
materials that will support your action planning and being more creative and uh, continuing to do this work more effectively. So feel free to type. Um, I see um, Beate has her hand up. Feel free to unmute and tell us what you've got and then I'll turn it back over um, for the last couple minutes. Uh, sorry, I thought it was finished. That's why I raised my hand. So I wanted to ask you if, if this presentation is available to us, I would love to show this to my people in 350 Montreal. I believe Lise, Lise will say yes. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is great. So I see some uh, notes. Anybody else want to unmute and say anything you're think taking away from this session or thinking about? What's your next step? Or was there an action that you're thinking about that, happened, that you want to share or note? I think I want to check out every Thing you have in the toolbox because it's been so helpful and having like maybe pick three like you did in the slides will help with our creative uh, process thinking about action so thank you so much for sharing this resource excellent and go for it and be in touch <laughs> and there's some really great resources on the website in the thing called batmo for trainers in multiple languages about how to use these tools with your own groups. All right. What so it, sorry, what is it called for trainers? So if you go to the beautifultrouble.org website, there will yeah. be a link at the top that says for trainers. Okay, okay, got it. And that's all you have to find. It's called, right. we call it BATMO, Beautiful Action Trainers Modules. Okay. <laughs> short, but you can just find it on the website. Okay, thank you so much. And Thank Lisa, I'll turn, it, I'll turn it over to you to close out, but feel free to keep typing uh, what you're taking away or anything else. Right. Thank you, Nadine. Uh, yes, just a few wrapping up things. Uh, the first one is that we have a feedback form as well that uh, we want to share with everyone so that you can let us know uh, what you felt about uh, the session. And also, uh, if you want a like certificate of attending this training, we can make that happen. Uh, we will be sharing the slides and the recording uh, in the coming uh, weeks or so. Um, and if you have any other question about this training, about any other training happening this week, you can get in touch with me. I'm putting my uh, email in the chat box. Uh, and yeah, as I said, this is a training that's part of a, a whole uh, program. There's loads more really exciting sessions coming up, so uh, you can have a look on the website and sign up for other sessions if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, for now, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you for attending, uh, to Dave for helping with the tech, uh, and obviously to Nadine for running this session with us. Uh, it was really inspiring and exciting, and um, yeah, I hope to see all of you again on some other trainings, and thanks for making the time today. Thanks Have so a great much. rest of your day. Thanks for the tech support, Deb. Thank you, Lise. Glad to see you all. See you